Yo, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the channel. This is the RTH Podcast, man. I'm your host, Nephew, and I'm checking in, man. So it seems as though David Benavidez did not do enough, man, to uh, at least become uh, a part of the conversation for the Canelo Alvarez sweepstakes. Um, it seems as though... Uh, he might have to see the likes of David Morrell. Now, um, shout out to the WBA, bro. President Gilberto Mendoza has suggested that the WBC mandatory David Benavidez should face WBA mandatory David Morrell next with the winner to challenge Canelo Alvarez for the undisputed WBA, WBC, IBF, and WBO Super middleweight world titles but the crazy thing about this is john Ryder's name is nowhere a part of this scenario nor is dimitri bivar because those are the two fights that are scheduled for canelo alvarez next so the possibility of it being canelo alvarez holding that undisputed super middleweight championship world titles is 50 50 because we all know he's going to be john Ryder, but nobody knows what's going to happen in that bivall fight craziest scenario is, is that bivall wins the 168 division he don't have to defend those titles he could throw them up in the air bro and force david benavidez to have to go and scrap and get all of those belts one by one you see what I'm saying? Like, if that make any sense? Because the 168 division has nothing to do with Dimitri Bivar, meaning that David should get this fight first. He should get it first. He should get Canelo Alvarez next. He should get him next. He shouldn't have to wait. He shouldn't have to wait until Bivar get. Because if Bivar beat, uh, if, if Bivar beat Canelo, bro, he could throw the belts in there. He could throw him in the air, bro, and then it's gonna be a tournament for all these belts all over again, right? Not to mention, David Morrell was supposed to have his next fight was supposed to be a, a contender fight, although he is the interim champion. He's supposed to have a contender fight, uh, and in his next fight, and if he win, he was supposed to get uh, a shot at Canelo, right? So this could be in the meantime, between time, right? It's not necessarily going to happen. Excuse me, but it's just a suggestion. If 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 I could add a suggestion to the suggestion box, I'd rather see David Morrell take on Dimitri Andrade, bro. If Dimitri Andrade feels as though he can beat David Morrell, that would be a good fight for him. And not to mention, it's a good step up fight for David Morrell. And bro. Um, it will solidify who is the guy that's right next in line under David Benavidez, in my opinion, right? Because I'm not sold on Dimitri Andrade, bro. I'm not sold on him, bro. Y'all can be. I'm not, bro. I don't know who, who that guy is and, and what what is his goals, bro? Because he's ducked so many people and he talk about everybody, but he ducked everybody. So I, I don't know, bro. Like who? He a six round fighter to me, bro. I'm just keeping it real. Anything under eight rounds, and that's like three rounds uh, more than I'm saying about. Uh, I mean, three three rounds less than what I'm saying about Caleb Plant. Caleb Plant gonna give you nine rounds regardless. You gonna get nine good rounds out of Caleb Plant regardless. That uh, Demetri Andrade, yeah, mm -hmm. about six, five six. He gonna give you the best five six rounds he can give you, bro. And after that, he gonna be winded. He ain't gonna have no power. He gonna be pillow fist, bro. He gonna he gonna be look. He gonna be dramatic. That that dude, bro. I don't know about him, fam. So I would love to see uh, Dave Morrell take on Dimitri Andrade. If Andrade wins, it proves that he's supposed to be where he at. If he loses, Dan Morrell supposed to get to the table and we can move Dimitri Andrade around. Maybe he can go down to one six and try to see that Charlo fight. Just my opinion, right? But for David Benavidez, I'd rather see David Benavidez take on Xanabek. I'd rather see that fight. Xanabek versus uh, David Benavidez, great 
fight. That's a 50-50 fight. You can't put David Morrell, a guy who only has eight fights, not much boxing experience in the professionals, um, not to mention all of the, the little tweaks that, that can happen for a fight. Like, a lot of people blame uh, Kenny Bayless for the reason why uh, David Benavidez did not get the knockout of Kayla Plant. I call it BS. I really do. I call it BS. The reason why is because Kenny ain't really do nothing where... You know, you can say that David still couldn't have got the, the KO. He didn't. What what was the reason that David didn't get the KO was because of that big ass ring that they was fighting in. They had to take more steps to get to the target than than normal. Which is why it wasn't no knockout that night. It wasn't one. Maybe I think it was a stoppage in the Spencer fight. I could be wrong about that because I wasn't really watching the fights. I was playing Madden, bro, and listening to the the fights. And then when the, when the Benavidez and, and Plant fight happened, that's when I that's when I started to you know watch the fight. But uh, yeah, man, it, it's just to me, bro. It, to me, this is unnecessary. It's just another way for them to uh, hold up the 168 division. And bro, undisputed at 168, bro. That's a goal that Canelo has already reached. You see what I'm saying? He He's already reached that goal, bruh. So he don't care about defending it. He don't care about it. Which is why I would rather Canelo just throw the belts in the air. He don't care about 168. He's fought at 175. He went back down to 160 with his get out of jail free card. Gennady Golovkin three fight. He had his get out of jail free card. And, and and now he's fighting John Ryder, which is another softball. It's not, it's not even a good uh, tune-up for uh, Dimitri Bivar. That's not no good tune-up for Dimitri Bivar. David Morrell is stuck at eight fights, and y'all want to put him in the ring with, with the most elite 168-pound uh, fighter in the world. We don't even know this guy yet. We we don't know what got him in the boxing. He don't really get no camera lights in front of him like that. Like, bro, we we risking the future and the present. Because we have the present right now in David Benavidez. He could possibly move up to 175. You know what I'm saying? I think he, I think he cut pretty easy because he was the lesser of the two guys on the night. But they, it was just two pounds under 168. So he could be having weight issues. He might not be. He might be sturdy enough to stay at 168 for a couple more years. But come on, man. You're holding up his career. I don't want to see Bivar get Canelo at the risk that Bivar going to throw the belts in the air. And why would he defend at 160? Because yeah, he got that big-ass Arthur Better be at 175. So if he want to duck that smoke, he might stay at 168. Yeah, he might stay at 168 to duck that smoke with Arthur Better be. He might. I don't know, nah. I don't know. He 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 very adamant on wanting to be undisputed, bro. He's very adamant on that. Um, but he he don't seem like he walking towards better be. He seem he seem like he he just waiting on Canelo. I don't know, bro. We we might see the uprise of 168 that be all come down, but I don't know, man. I I'd rather see Canelo. Benavidez. If I can't see Canelo Benavidez, I'd rather see Benavidez Zanabek. Um, I'd rather see David Morrell versus Demetri Andrade. It's a good step up fight for uh David Morrell. Not to mention uh Andrade's already ducked Charlo. He's already ducked Benavidez and he's already ducked Zanabek on several occasions. So at this point, bro, he don't deserve to be in title contention whatsoever. Not to mention we don't know what he wanna do. He's 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 all over the place, bro. We're gonna need him to sit down and, and, and give us some 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 real instead of being just promoted on a standpoint because he black or because he got the right connections in the game to get interviews and shit like that. Like we need some real shit come from uh Demetri Andrade. I don't care if you like what I'm saying. If you don't, man, um it is what it is, man. This is unbiased content and fair boxing reviews. So if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't, man. But this is the RTH podcast. I'm your host, nephew. And I'm signing out, man. Kudos to Dave Benavides on the job well done. It just wasn't enough, man, which is why I think he should have 
excuse me, I think he should have cussed out Canelo in Spanish and in English so we all could hear it. He could have called him a punk, a pussy, whatever the case it would have been, just to let it be known that, hey, bruh, if you don't want to see me, just get the belts back. I will leave you alone. That would have been good enough, right? You call yourself the Mexican monster. You got to be a monster. I understand that he was doing a lot of uh, speaking in Spanish. That was good. You came out to Spanish music. That was good, bro. You showed the world that you are ready to take the throne at, at being the, the, the next big Mexican fighter to ever touch the ring, bro. Um, you got the likes of Mike Tyson helping you with your endorsements right now and helping you with your promo, bro. So that's great, bro. It put you in great seats, bro. But you cannot be scared to take that torch away from Canelo because he's not going to be willing to hand it over to you the way you're expecting. Mayweather never passed the torch. He never passed it, bro. Which is why we have to figure out who is the face of boxing. Tank saying he the face of boxing for no damn reason. But he get to say it because he was Mayweather's protege. Although Errol Spence sells out arenas. Although Bud Crawford has the resume the resume and the record. Although Devin Haney has the accolades. And although Shakur Stevenson is technically that guy. We still got to hear that Tank Davis out of everybody. It is the is the the face of boxing because Mayweather never passed the torch. So it is what it is. We have to do real be- rebuilding on our side, and you're gonna have to do rebuilding too, David. If you do not get Canelo in that ring, you need to be Shannon the Cannon Briggs versus uh 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 Vladimir Klitschko. Let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. Every time you see Canelo, let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. Yeah, it might be annoying, bro. It might be annoying. You might get tired of it, bro. But at the end of the day, if your fans don't really want to see you, uh, see their champion be a fighting champion, then they not boxing fans, bro. Because all the boxing fans, especially me, bro, I stand up for you, bro. If you come to any of my videos, bro, I stand up for you, bro. I think you should get the 168 Undisputed Fight before Bivar, bro. I stand up for you, bro. I, I, I even got scary theme music that I put up for you, bro. Because I think you are the, 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 the boogeyman at 168. So I ain't being, you know, facetious when I'm saying what I'm saying. I'm not saying you gotta, uh, you gotta uh, degrade your manhood just so you can get a title shot. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying if you're going to Canelo Humble, then this is what you're gonna get, bro. The WBA president Gilberto Mendoza has suggested that the WBC mandatory David Benavidez should face WBA mandatory uh, David Morrell next. With the winner to challenge Canelo, bro. You supposed to get that now. Why you ain't getting that now? Yeah, because you respect him. You got to stop respecting him, bro. Because that'll give you Charlo. Watch. Watch what I tell you. That'll give you him. Yeah, because anything to keep Canelo in that seat. Anything to keep Canelo in that seat. Anything. Until his little retirement party is over. And that's when you're going to miss the show. Because that's your legacy fight, bro. We can say it's for Charlo. It's not for Charlo. Canelo ain't gonna fight Charlo. Triple G not gonna fight Charlo. That's not gonna happen. He just sitting around waiting for nothing. We can say it's for Andrade. Andrade not gonna get Canelo. Andrade not gonna get Triple G. And if he do get Charlo, it's because he ain't have no other option, right? Um, Morel might get Canelo, but if he get Canelo, it's be- it's gonna be too early, too soon. Morel should get you as his legacy fight way down the line. Way down the line. You should be his 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 fight way down the line. Right now, Zanabek is a step in the right direction because that's a good enough fight for Bival. If you can't get Canelo, Zanabek the next best thing, bro. That's the next best thing. You get Zanabek, you knock him off. He he just as good. He's just as good and a good tune up for Bival. But he also a good tune up if you want to see Canelo after the fact. David Morrell, he don't even much fit the Bivar category, and he really don't fit the Canelo category. It's just you fighting another guy. It's just a waste of time. I'm doing overtime on this video, bro. This is RTH Podcast, man. I'm your host, nephew, and I'm signing out, man. Again, kudos to David Benavidez. Good luck to David Morrell. He got a fight coming up. 
So good luck to him. Hopefully this don't happen because I want to get to know David Morrell as a fighter before he get into a fight like this. But I don't make the matches, bro. I just give you guys the news. Again, this is the RTH Podcast. I'm your host, Nephew, and I'm signing out. Y'all take it easy, bruh. Peace.